What is the New Testament and who wrote it? Part two of a four-part series, this is Den on Religion. Hey peeps, it's Dr. B with 10 on Religion. Many people say they believe in the Bible, but don't know the history behind who wrote it or how it was formed. I am so confused. We're going to look at answering three questions in this four-part series. First, what are these documents and who composed them? Second, how were they transmitted? And third, why these documents? How were they selected? This episode and the one before focuses on the first question, what are these documents and who composed them? The contents of the New Testament include four Gospels, Acts, which is history with a clear theological agenda, 21 epistles, uh, which are 13 letters with Paul's name on them and eight others, and the Apocalypse of John, known by its common trade name of Revelation. The previous episode focused on the epistles. This episode will focus on the Gospels and other writings. Dominic Crossan, a retired professor of religious studies at DePaul University in Chicago, wrote, Even if all history is story, not all story is history. We're going to first talk about the Gospels, which are stories with a measure of embedded history. A Gospel was simply a story about Jesus. And though many people are familiar with the names of the four Gospels in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, many are surprised to learn that there are around 25 to 30 other Gospels. Uh, many of them highly fragmentary, uh, meaning historians and archaeologists have only found bits and pieces of them. Even though these other Gospels are quite interesting uh, because they shed light on what early Christian communities were writing about Jesus, uh, we're going to focus on the four Gospels that made it into the New Testament. Uh, we're going to mention a few things about authorship issues and then unpack a few things about language. The biggest surprise, uh, at least to a lot of Christians, is that these four documents were all written anonymously. Uh, there was no author contained in the text itself, and the document titles are later editions. Uh, the narratives in Mark and Matthew are given entirely in the third person, uh, even including Matthew's calling in Matthew chapter 9. Uh, the narrative in Luke uses the first person at the beginning, but the pronoun is not used to indicate the author is an eyewitness to what they narrate. John uses the first person at the beginning, but after that, we or us is used to indicate the community of later followers. Uh, John also uses the first person at the end, but he is not the so-called beloved disciple because he differentiates himself from him in the text. All four gospel writers never claim to be personally connected with any of the events that they are narrating uh, or the persons about whom they tell their stories. This means they are not forgeries, but false author attributions. How did this happen? Wait a minute! Their surviving manuscripts do not have titles on them, at least until after the year 200 CE. Early Christian leaders who quoted them never called them by name. The according to in the titles of the Gospels seen today were a later external designation by someone else uh, and are not original to the text. An early Christian leader named Justin Martyr, who lived in the first half of the second century between uh, around the years 100 and 165, he quotes Gospel passages in his writings but does not refer to them with any titles only calling them the Gospels or sometimes the Memoirs of the Apostles. In some instances, it is not even entirely clear which Gospel he is quoting, uh, so it's evident the Gospels we have today were not yet titled by that point. Uh, the titles are first mentioned by Irenaeus in a document called Against Heresies, written sometime between 175 and 190. Uh, the anonymous authors were respected until Irenaeus, in this document against heresies, the heretics have gone astray either because they use Gospels that are not really Gospels or because they use only one or another of the four that are legitimately Gospels. According to Irenaeus, just as the Gospel has been spread by the four winds of heaven over the four corners of the earth, so there must be four and only four Gospels, and they are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 
For Irenaeus, legitimate Gospels could only be those that had apostolic authority, meaning it was written either by an apostle himself or a close companion. Because there were so many Gospels in circulation by his day, apostolic credentials were needed. Matthew and John were eyewitnesses. Uh, he thought Mark was influenced by Peter and Luke was influenced by Paul. These last two, Peter and Paul, represented the perspectives of the two greatest apostles. The gospel narratives needed apostolic authorship to be considered authoritative and later to be included into the New Testament canon. In reality, the four gospels were written by Greek-speaking Christian communities uh, somewhere in the Roman Empire between the years 70 and 100 CE. Even though the gospels were written in Greek, uh, as were their sources, some of the surviving traditions were originally spoken in Aramaic, the language of Jews living in Palestine, including Jesus and his early followers. These traditions date at least to the early years of the Christian movement before it expanded into the Greek-speaking lands elsewhere in the Mediterranean. The evidence for this uh, is that in several passages in the Gospels, a key word or phrase has been left in the original Aramaic, and the author, writing in the Greek language, has had to translate it for his audience. Two examples are Mark 5.41 with Jairus' daughter and Mark 15.34 when Jesus is on the cross. Another example is in John 3 when Jesus is having a conversation with Nicodemus and uses the Greek word anothen, uh, which has a double meaning, but only in Greek, not in Aramaic. Thus, the conversation could not have happened as reported in Aramaic, and thus the author of John originally wrote in the Greek language. Aramaic Jews in Jesus' native land were telling stories about him well before Paul wrote his letters in the 50s. And this likely began within a few years of the traditional date of his death. So when were these four Gospels written? Part of this has to do with what scholars refer to as the synoptic problem. Basically, asking the question concerning the textual relationship between the four accounts. Many books have been written on this subject, so I'll have to defer the details uh, about this synoptic problem to maybe a later time. But with regard to the general timing, I'll just mention one thing now. All of the Gospels had to be originally composed after the destruction of the Temple in the year 70 CE because they mentioned this destruction. Paul's description of the end in his seven letters does not include temple destruction because when he wrote, the temple had not yet been destroyed by the Romans. This happened after Paul's death, so he could not possibly have known about it as the gospel authors did. On to the last two documents. The book of Acts, which also did not originally have a title, was also referred to as the Acts of the Apostles by Irenaeus. The content is a conglomeration of several earlier sources and likely was written by the same author who wrote the Gospel of Luke. The last document, the Apocalypse of John, uh, was one of two well-known apocalypses in early Christianity, the other being the Apocalypse of Peter. The Apocalypse of John is better known by its trade name title, Revelation. It was written by an author named John, but because it was written uh, around 90 CE or later, it was not composed by Jesus' friend and disciple, John, because he clearly would not have lived that long. So it was written by a different person, also named John. To better understand this document, I have to mention a few quick thoughts on how the apocalyptic worldview developed. First, Ancient Israel began with largely a covenantal worldview. God was on the side of Israel, and this was marked by protection. Eventually, this didn't work out as Israel did not appear to be protected. Rather, it was conquered multiple times. This transitioned into a prophetic worldview. The prophets explained the sufferings of Israel as punishment for sins. The nation must return to God. Eventually, this didn't work out either as after repenting, they continued to suffer, and the bad actors who oppressed them prospered. Finally, the apocalyptic worldview emerged. Israel's suffering was not from punishment of sin, but it was due to their view that there were powers of evil who were opposed to God. 
This was heavily influenced by another religion popular in the area called Zoroastrianism. Apocalypticism had four main components. Dualism, there is this huge divide between the good and evil powers. Pessimism, the world is going to get worse. Vindication, at the end of the age we're ultimately going to win with punishment for the evildoers and rewards for the good doers. And lastly, eminence. All of this was going to happen soon. The apocalyptic worldview was often conveyed through a type of writing called an apocalypse, which was visionary in nature with often bizarre imagery. The apocalypse of John or Revelation mostly refers to events surrounding the destruction of the temple in the year 70. For example, the Antichrist and the number 666 has nothing to do with the future, but was likely a reference to Nero, the letters of whose name adds up to 666. As I said in the last episode, just because there are authorship issues like misattributions doesn't mean that these documents are not important. Uh, they are all very important as it gives historians some of their earliest written insights into the formation of the Christian communities during the first century. In the next episode, we'll talk about how these texts were transmitted uh, and mention some concerns that arise with copying these texts over time. I hope this vlog has helped you better understand this topic. Until next time, stay curious. If you enjoyed this, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Baby, this is 10 on Religion.